Hey ICPF, my name is Pastor Ruben. I'm so thankful for this opportunity. I serve at Metro Church of God alongside Pastor Linson and Pastor Sadish Kumar as our senior pastor. And today I am going to be giving you the devotional that the Lord has been put in my heart. I'm so thankful to ICPF and the leadership. I'm glad that we are still doing things to still connect our community and still be there for each other uh, despite these hard times. I'm so encouraged. Uh, by all the things that are going on. last uh, This past Sunday, we had a panel discussion with Pastor MJ and, and Dr. Lindsay and, and, and Dr. Nancy, who brought us a lot of awareness with the, what's going on in this world with this pandemic. And we're so thankful to that. Last week, we had a devotional with uh, Pastor Baiju, and that was so great and awesome. And this week, I have the opportunity to share what the Lord has been putting on my heart. And specifically, specifically what the Lord has been putting on my heart is this passage from Romans 12, 12, and it reads like this. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be consistent in prayer. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. During this time, I would love for you to practice these three things. If you can put this on your phone as a reminder every day, Maybe put it somewhere on your wall or some reminder that tells you that you need to practice these, these three things during this pandemic and when you're inside in your homes quarantining is to rejoice in hope. It, it's really easy to lose hope and just be down and out and think that everything is really hard and, and tough and it is hard and tough. But then this is what the, the verse says is be patient in tribulation. And this is the last and final thing it says be constant in prayer. If these are the three things we practice, I believe that God will, will get us through and help us through the situation in our life. Uh, I want to focus specifically on, on this word called patience. And what the Lord has been teaching me today and in my devotional is that, that God is giving us purpose in our patience. That God is giving us purpose through our patience. And I want you to, to trust God during this time. And patience is something that we don't like. You know, our society, uh, we say that we are patient people, but when it really comes down to it, um, we don't like to wait in, in drive through lines or, or traffic. Everything is at a touch of a button now where you can get your food delivered at the door. By two, three hours, you have groceries. And we're also always finding uh, faster ways to to get things delivered to us or, or so we don't have to wait. Um, but the Bible specifically says that, that patience is something that is great for us. It builds character. Uh, there's a lot of things that God does through us and refines us in the season and in the process of waiting. Um, in, the hurry, in the hurry up of life in this world, sometimes patience is a short commodity. Um, I want to turn our attention, and this is a little... Uh, analog analogy that, that uh, James writes in, in his account, and he says in James 5, 7, he says, Be patient, then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord is coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. I'll read that again one more time, James 5, 7. Be patient, then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crops, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. See, in this, um, in this passage, the, the writer references a, a farmer, and I am not a farmer by any means, and I haven't grown anything, but I know my parents, they love growing their, their krishi and their plants in their backyard. Uh, they are always doing things to see their plants grow, for example, right now, my parents are planting the, the plants in their backyard in order for them to see harvest all the way up to October. What a long season of waiting, right, for, for something that they're toiling and doing hard work right now. And they might only see the, the results of it all the way up to October. And I admire their, their hard work and dedication. And even in those seasons of our life, it's hard for us to go through those seasons of waiting. And what the, the author is saying in this time is just like a farmer waits for his harvest, during that time, there's a lot of good things that happened, a lot of great um, moments of, of waiting that God starts to do something in our life that if we are willing to wait, we will see the harvest come in due time. 
And um, there's a season of when you're harvesting. Again, I'm not a, a farmer or, or I don't grow plants by all means, but I do know that there's a season where, where when winter starts to come, and this is a time where it's really harsh for some of the plants. So what my parents would do is they would bring some of the plants, the plants that can't survive winter, they would bring it inside, right? And this is a time where they bring it inside in order for them to survive all through winter so they can have more fruit and, and the harvest will be greater after winter. So it'll be funny, sometimes I'll be coming home and I will see, I'll see all these plants all over the house and I'm thinking that I'm in a forest or <laughs> I just see a bunch of plants everywhere and I'm just thinking like, what's mom and dad doing? Um, but then I, as I was studying scripture and I was just, I was understanding this concept, right? Kind of like what we're doing right now. We're inside, we're in our homes. We are uh, patiently uh, waiting for something to happen. But there's two things that happen when people bring plants inside, all right? And this is a concept of grooming and pruning, grooming and pruning. And what, what people do is, uh, process of pruning is where they remove anything that jeopardizes the health of the plant. So they remove all the bad leaves, all the bad branches, things that are dead, you start to just take those out, all the bad soil, um, if there's bad soil, they put it in another soil so it could grow healthier. They take out all the insects, things that are detrimental to the growth of the plant. And there's another process called grooming the plant. And this is where you give water to the plant, uh, you put it near sunlight, or and you give it the right nutrition in order for the plant to grow through the winter harsh seasons. And right now in this, in this time and trivial moment of our life, God is taking us through a pruning and grooming season. You have to understand what the Lord is doing right now in our life. God wants to take and get rid of anything that is detrimental to our health and our growth, things that are causing um, temptations and sin in our life. God wants to cut that out. And this is a time for you to reflect, especially when there's not a, a lot of things going on in the busyness of life. It's time for us to reflect and think about the things in our areas that we need to change in order for us to grow more in faith, grow more in the, in the word, and grow more in, in knowing the Lord. Um, and then there's another process called grooming. And this is a very big, important process for us. We have to be intentional about what we're doing during this time. Are we intentional about growing in God's word? Are we intentional about our prayer life? Are we intentional about, about creating healthy relationships in order for us to grow? Um, if we are not proactive during this time of grooming, it'll be really hard for us to get through the season of our life. So everyone that's listening right now, to everyone in, in, in different situations, I encourage you that, that this season of waiting could be really hard, but take advantage of it. Take advantage of, of pruning anything that, that is detrimental to your health and to your growth and growing closer to God. And also do more active things to grow more in knowing who the Lord is. This is the time to do it. Because other than, than this time when life, everything starts to reopen and, and all these institutions, they start to, to come back together, we're going to get busy again. And we're going we're gonna to regret that we missed out and we didn't take advantage of this time. Um, but I do want to encourage you guys that, that yes, waiting is hard, but it, it's very important for you to have vision. It's very important for you to have vision that the Lord is taking you out of this season, that your harvest is coming that there will be a time that God is gonna use you tremendously for his kingdom and for his glory. Um, sometimes when people lack vision, that's when we grow weary and we don't like to wait, right? It's when we lack that vision in our life that we, we get tired and frustrated and we're like, God, we don't know what you're doing. We don't know where, we, where you're taking us, God. We don't even know if you're gonna help us get through the situation. But when we have vision, we trust God we see that God is going to deliver us. We're going to, we know that God is going to take us out of the situation that we're going through right now. And, and I want to encourage you guys is to have vision that the Lord is going to bring the harvest into your life, that God is getting ready to, to open the floodgates and open up so many things in your life. But it's important for us to have that vision. If you have vision, the, the waiting process is not that hard. If you have vision, the waiting process is not difficult. The Lord will help you get through it. Um, if you're confident and you know that the Lord will carry us, then that is vision enough to get through every day, right? If you're confident and know that God is going to deliver us, 
then that will bring us that hope that we need, that God is going to get help us get through every single day and he's going to help us find that job or he's going to he's going to um, open up new ways for us to get through this difficult time this season. If you know people that are sick, if you trust the Lord, that's vision and enough to know that God is carrying us every day and every single moment of our life. See, vision is knowing where you want to go. Vision is seeing and knowing where you want to go. You might ask and say, how can we see and how can we know? Right? It's, it's, a, it's a really uh, interesting concept, right? Vision is seeing and knowing where you want to go. But it reminds me of when I used to put directions on my phone, right? Um, you, would have a, you would have a destination. Um, you would start at one point and then you know that you need to get to the other point. And so often maybe we don't know exactly what that place is or we can't really physically see what that is but we know that that's where we want to go back in the day before the the invention of the phone and and google maps and all this stuff people used to write down directions and uh not me in particular but i remember um when when we used to get directions people used to do landmarks and uh different things that stuck out to them for example, they'll be like, if you're trying to get to one place, take a left at this street. There will be a Walmart in the corner. Take a right at that, that Walmart. And then as you go down the hill, you know, they'll, they'll be naming all these like things that, are, that you will see on the way, the process of getting to your destination. Uh, I do want to encourage you guys that, that even though it's hard to, to know where you're going, trust God in the process. Know that even in the process that God is doing something amazing in your life and he, you will get to that, that destination and that time of, of, of trying to get there wouldn't, is not going to be that hard because you know that in every single turn, every single moment, every single landmark of your life or, or with the difficulties in your life, that, that those are just those landmarks that God is taking you and you can reflect and know that God is taking you where you need to go. And that's exactly where we need to have that vision. Um, and here's some helpful tips that I want to encourage you guys and leave you with um, in this time of your waiting. Write down um, what you want the Lord to do for you during this quarantine. Write down your goals and your aspirations. Uh, ask the Lord after this, this time of quarantine, where do you want to go, right? So when you know you, if you want to go there, for example, I had talked to some of my friends. They said that they want to start a Bible study. They want to uh, start a podcast. Uh, some of my friends even told me that, that they want to go back to Bible school and, and become, uh, go back to seminary. And I, I, I encouraged them. I said, I said, yeah, maybe after all these things start opening up again, you, you can start doing that. But I believe that right now you can start doing those things. Uh, maybe you can start reading your Bible more. Maybe you can, you can, uh, YouTube is a great, great resource to, to watch things to help you better yourself. Um, but take advantage of this time. Write down your goals and figure out how you can get there. Um, and then during this time, figure out what you want to do for the Lord. Um, because don't just be stagnant. Don't just be discouraged and just, just get out of it. Just be like, hey, during this time, if it's just little things of just encouraging people, showing your love for others, um, sending people a Bible verse or texting them, these are times right now that you can say that, that you can do something amazing for the Lord and we have to take advantage of that. I wanna leave you guys with this verse and this is Philippians 4, 6. And it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. See, I want to encourage you guys. When I, when I went back to Romans and I said, these are the three things that I want you guys to take as important is to rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. The last part of, of patience is his recipe and the most important ingredient, and it's prayer. And this is the ingredient that, that I want you to practice even during this time, not when you're out of it or when we get out of quarantine, but this is the most important thing in your waiting and in the season of your life. And I encourage you, ISPF, as I'm going to leave us out with the word of prayer. And I hope that you are praying in your homes. I hope that you are uh, encouraging yourself and you're staying uh, positive and you're, you're filling yourself with hope. And know that even though things are hard, that, that God is doing something great, even in this time of patience and waiting. All right. So I'm going to end us off with some prayer and just want to say that I'm thankful to ICPF 
we have some great things coming up this week. Every Sunday, we have, just like how we had a panel discussion this past Sunday, we have different things going on. Next Monday, every Monday, we have a devotional by, by different leaders in our community. I'm glad that we get to still connect and say that we are here and we are caring for those that are around us and we are still uh, showing our support in any way possible. So if there's any prayer requests, um, please let us know. If there's any ways that we can help you or we can be there for you, please also let us know. So I'm gonna end us off with prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you that, Lord, despite all these things that are going on in this world, God, you are still a faithful God. I pray that we do not lose our trust into you, God. Just like how the word says, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, God. You have never changed, Lord God. Even though our situations and our seasons have changed, Lord, you have delivered us and you have brought us through, God, and we believe that you will bring us through again, Lord God. We pray, Lord, in this time, this this season of waiting and patience, Lord, that God, you would you would build us build character in us, God. You would help us grow and 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 know more of who you are, God. We don't just take this time for granted, Lord, but we want to be intentional about everything that we do, Lord, in every single day, in every single moment, in every hour, Lord. We thank you that that God, you are still a miracle working God. That you can you are still working in this situation, Lord. We pray for those that are sick. We pray for those that are working and fighting in the front lines, God. We pray for um, those that are uh, God that are heartbroken and 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 confused and 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 left with despair, God. We 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 pray for hope in their life, God. We pray that you'll restore their joy, Lord. And and we thank you that 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 God, you are sovereign. You're still on the throne, God. And we don't ever lose hope and ever lose sight of this, God. And we trust you, Lord. We thank you for ICPF and the organization, Lord. We thank you that that they're still still doing great things, Lord, during this time. We put our trust and our faith into you. We say that we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys, have a great week. Love you guys, bye.